All right, back again, Luke here. And today, what I thought we could do is go over some obscure arcade hardware. That is the Taito Z System hardware. And this game in particular, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but this is Taito's, can we get this in there? Aqua Jack. Uh, luckily, I was able to get this board here uh, thanks to Ken6275. I uh, really appreciate uh, his help here in trying to get this thing over to me. It is a big board. Um, this whole board itself, I don't, I don't know the actual size of it, but it's one of Taito's larger boards here. And this one was unfortunately not working when I got it, but uh, I was able to fix it up with a couple of RAM chips over here, replace those, and got it back up and running again. But this is some hardware that you just don't hear or see a lot about on the internet. If you type in even like Taito Aquajack, you may get a few pictures and a couple of um, people talking about it, maybe some videos online as far as like main plays of it but you really don't see the board and you don't see a lot of people talking about it. So this is one thing I thought we could get out there and I could share with some of you guys. There are some issues too that uh, I would kind of like to resolve with these uh, boards, especially this one, which uh, I haven't been able to find, like I said, because of a lack of information on the internet. But this Taito hardware here, the Z-Series, it runs with two CPUs. This is the 68,000 Motorola CPUs, these are both run at 12 megahertz, and each one is responsible for one particular job. In some cases, I guess they're both tied together, but one is for the visuals, and the other one is for the audio. So for the audio itself, we've got our uh, Taito SYT. This is responsible for like the uh, audio sound effects and things like that, uh, as well over here, I believe, as the ABT. This works with the sound. Uh, the system itself, getting it up and running, we have uh, two actually here. This PCR is the one that's responsible for graphics, as well as the, uh, what is it, the 0220IOC is responsible for the input handling. This is the SCN, which is actually getting the game up and running. This is really important. It's almost like the system of it, the, the, uh, the board itself, to keep the board um, stable, actually, to get it to, to fire up. So it's an important one. And then we have all of these uh, quad flat packs over here, including these two, which are responsible for graphics. And uh, luckily, like I said, this board is up and running, but I do have another one. I have a Japanese version, and that board was pretty destroyed. I'm slowly trying to piece it back together, getting all of the different parts that are needed, but I think it's it's really bad. It's missing, like, uh, it needs replacement of these here, and um, these are like the road, uh, the background graphics for the road, and the um, this one's also for the road as well. These ones, I believe, are just for the sprites, sprite handling. But those are all bad on the other one, so I need to replace those. Uh, a couple of differences with these boards. The uh, American or the English board actually has a different color scheme, a color, different color pattern than the Japanese one. It's much less detailed uh, compared to the Japanese one. And there are quite a few differences you'll see when I turn this on here. But the ROMs themselves for the graphics are located here. And the... Uh, what is it? The doo -doo 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 -doo, more, I, I should say, like the character sprites are located in these two plus this one here. So all of this RAM on the right side, this is all responsible for the uh, the graphics themselves. If you have lines in it or missing sprites, that would be uh, this area on the right. And this will be part of the system, system RAM to get it going. There's quite a lot of RAM on this board. But uh, yeah, let's fire this thing on. I'll show you the intro of it, of a different intro, because this one is not as common as the Japanese one. So flop this on here. You can hear the sounds. Now, as you can see, Aqua Jack is actually in blue and red, and that's the same way that it's listed as the Romstar version and the arcade cabinet was actually that same color. You'll also notice that the boat here is red and yellow and gray as compared to the Japanese version where it's become gray and it has uh, a bit more texture to it. The thing about the 
English version here is there are a lot of missing textures on the water and uh, the first stage is actually quite different in the English version this is all blue water but in the Japanese version it's actually red water so a couple of uh, interesting things to note here this will show you the actual handles and stuff that's another point we'll get into in just a few minutes which is probably the main purpose for me making this video um, we'll let it roll through just maybe once more and I'll let you guys see what the water effects look like or don't look like because they are missing now you guys may be asking why am I not playing this well one of those uh, issues is that the controls I have you'll notice here in the water the water effects are actually extremely simple um, you'll just see it looks like there's a couple of waves in it and that's about it you know blue water few waves but in the Japanese version there's actually texture to the water so I can coin it up here we can add another coin here and we can actually start it we can use a couple of the missiles we can use I believe that may be the only thing I have lined up here right now, but there are no controls. And the reason for that is because these boards require a specific I.O. board, which is one that I do not have, and one that I'm kind of hoping this video will promote a little bit more. That is the one that connects here to this M connector. Now, I'll try and see if I can find some pictures of the pinouts, but this M connector is, uh, it needs a specific I.O. board that will change the digital inputs to analog outputs and without that you can't do anything. Um, it has two rows of pins on the top here. The majority of them aside from this first one at the beginning and one or two away from the end on the top row are all ground but the bottom ones are all different data lines and whatnot. They're all connected through this section. So if we take a look at the schematics here for the M connector uh, at the top, aside from the first pin here and the last three pins, those are all grounds at the top. And you can see there are some address, there's quite a lot of address lines that are going through here. There's even a motor one. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, there's a couple of grounds in between there. And then it shows you some of the components that are used for this uh, subboard, but unfortunately, to get one working is another story but that's what we're working with here that's the connector and that's what uh, it requires so but um, yeah without that the board is unfortunately unplayable so I'm wondering if there's anyone out there who has a a board on an aqua jack that is complete or actually has the arcade cabinet maybe we can try to make a reproduction I've tried to talk to Caius about it and see if he can make a reproduction he mentioned he could but he said that he would need an original in order to do it or maybe we can figure out what the schematics are and what components are on it how it's all tied together here that would be pretty awesome but without an original uh, like board here these uh, PCBs unfortunately are just you well I guess you could use them for background graphics but that's it you can't play them so uh, biggest problem with this one it does need an adapter here it does need pretty high voltage in order to keep it uh, stable if it has low voltage it doesn't work properly also on the end here I believe pin uh, dip switch number two or dip switch number one one of these has to remain up because if it's not up it uh, it won't boot I think it has to be up all the time so it's either one or two here one of these is for the uh, the sound so it'll be demo sound on or demo sound off the other one needs to be on but so far that's a little bit of a look at you know, what this board is all about like I said there's not a whole lot of information out there and I don't know if I'm providing that much more but 
at least it's something. Uh, like I said, there aren't uh, a lot of uh, details as far as this PCB goes too, so I'm kind of hoping someone might be able to add some information or make a reproduction or something to keep these boards alive. Without that, you can't do anything. What I'm going to do next is I do have a Japanese board, and like I mentioned, it is in pretty rough shape. I'll have to pull it out here. But I'm going to switch out the ROMs, and I'll show you guys what the difference looks like between the English one that you just saw there and the Japanese one. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, so here what I've done is I've removed, I don't believe I have to remove this one, but this is, I believe, responsible for the sounds. And then we have these two program ROMs over here. This is from my other board, and these are the other two ROMs. Those are the only ones you need to change out. Everything else is the same on the English version uh, and the Japanese version. These are the only ROMs that you need to change out, the only EPROMs. So, Let's take a look at what the Japanese intro looks like. Which is one that you guys probably have seen before. If you've seen the, uh, the playthroughs on MAME. This is the one that I believe is probably a bit more sought after. And there we have the blue and green for Aqua Jack. A couple other things you'll notice here. Now you can see our boat has more like a purple or a gray color. The ocean is red, or the water here is red. And this is how it will start out in the game with the Japanese version. It's a bit interesting too, because as the boat is going, you can notice that the water here coming from the, the boat is actually still blue. But once again, we'll let this one run maybe through one time or two loops, just so you can see. The water effects are the biggest one that are different in this version, so. But, I mean, seems like a pretty neat game. It looks like uh, it might be a lot of fun if you could use the controls, but <laughs> nevertheless, unfortunately, you can't. This next stage is where you can see the water. Now at the beginning here, you'll notice that some of the water is blue, like before, but it'll change to a texture in a couple of seconds here. Now you can see this texture, which is a lot more, you know, intricate. It's much deeper, has more, um, what is it, uh, details to it. It's just, it looks a lot better, so. This may be one of the reasons why you don't see a whole lot of the original boards, but maybe more or less the Japanese boards. I'm not sure. I'm just assuming there. But once again, if we let's see for the third loop, maybe will it different stage, I believe. Oh no, it's back to the beginning. So you'll notice how this one says push button, and it doesn't have the picture of the uh, the gun controls there. But this area here is still all blue. You'll notice that the stage didn't really change, which is interesting to see that uh, some of the things in production, um, when they did do the regional changes, they didn't change some things out to make it easier. But yeah, a bit of an unfortunate situation right now with not being able to play it as it is. But I wanted to get this out there to show you guys maybe a little bit of information share with you what it looks like here I don't believe you can quickly go through it but that'll be the game over scene I'll show you how far you got but uh, in general, if anybody out there has any information, I suppose, regarding the, um, what is it, the subboard that needs to be attached to this in order to get the controls to work, or any other information as far as wiring controls up, I don't believe you can wire anything else to the, uh, the G connector here. I believe all of it has to come out of this M connector. But here is the Japanese version of the same game. This is also, I don't know if you guys can even see it, it's kind of missing down there, but this is also an Aqua Jack. And this is the one that is in really, really bad condition. 
Um, this thing was just totally mashed. Uh, all of the quad flat packs that are on this were just smashed in. I tried to straighten out as many as I could. You can see there's a couple that are kind of bent in there, but they were all crossed over. And I think that this board, those are just some surface mount scratches that I went over to check to make sure those were okay. But um, yeah, this whole board, it was submerged in water. So a lot of the components were either corroded or they were damaged and just, this board was just kind of thrown aside. So I've been working on it for a while now and I need to replace all of these. I still have these remaining ones to replace here. I've replaced the other ones so far, but uh, so right now that's the uh, the current problem is these remaining ICs or quad flat packs. And the main problem this thing has, I don't know if it'll pop up, it's very temperamental. It's kind of working sometimes, but other times it's just not. Like now, now it doesn't want to show anything. Hmm. Okay, being a bit stubborn here. Uh, it's very, very finicky. Sometimes it'll, yeah, we can get the display here, but it'll come up with a RAM error or it will reboot or sometimes tapping on the, uh, <laughs> the ICs will work here. Let's see if we can. See if we can get this thing to fire on. Just does not like. Yeah, we've got errors. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the current situation. I can get this thing to boot sometimes, but it's still even at that. It's it's pretty bad. Like here, it wants to boot. But it's missing all of the uh, the sprites. It might boot and it might lock up. That's another thing that it does from time to time. Ram error. <laughs> but like I said, this board was completely submerged and the ICs look like something they pulled off the Titanic. Let's see if... Come on, boot up. There we go. So this is what it looks like when it wants to boot. That is supposed to be the title screen. And it's it will try to do some of the scrolling graphics, but there you can see it's just I mean it's it's struggling. But the fact that it's kind of come this far from a completely dead board to where it is now is uh, definitely impressive. I know you guys may not think of it, <laughs> much of it, you know, in its current state, but um, it does actually look much better than it did when I first got it. <laughs> like it was just just a, a dead board. Now it's, you know, because of the sync issues and with using this uh, CGA to VGA converter too. It doesn't like the uh, the sync, so it's popping in and out. But the colors will change on it. I mean, it does its own thing. It's got a mind of its own. But we're getting there. This is freezing up again. So it'll do a reboot RAM error there. But that is this board. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be able to get it running again. But uh, yeah, it's, it's in a pretty bad state of disrepair at the moment. But nevertheless, hopefully this will give you guys a little bit more information about another title that is out there, but unfortunately isn't playable for the most part due to uh, one missing piece that who knows where, uh, where they are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. Should a bit of some rambling regarding a Taito Aquajack PCB. <laughs>